Hiya! Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. My name is Danny Berg, and guys, ever since I was a little kid, I always pictured what would it be like to live on another planet out there in space. I'd imagine looking up at night and being able to point to Earth in the night sky. How cool would that be? I still think that's cool. Well, it seemed like science fiction for quite a while, but these days, we might actually be just 10 to 20 years from the first human setting foot on what looks to be the next home for our species, the planet Mars. Now, things are obviously very different over there on Mars. So we've come up with a little checklist for the first humans who touched down with our top 10 things we need to live on Mars. NASA, you can thank me later. All right, at number 10, if we want to live there, we're going to first need to get there. Obviously, when NASA got humans to the surface of the moon for the first time in 1969, that was a massive, massive achievement. Rocket technology has obviously improved a lot since then, but the truth is Mars is still very, very far away. The moon is 370 1,300 kilometers away, but Mars makes that look like absolutely just, you know, next door when you realize that it's 140 million miles from Earth. The fastest spacecraft we have so far would take 162 days to make that journey. It would need to be able to support the astronauts for about five months and protect them from deadly space radiation. Yeah, it's a big task. The ship also needs to be able to escape Earth's gravity with all the supplies and materials and tools for the whole mission. And right now, there isn't a rocket on Earth powerful enough to do that, but that's not to say there won't be one in the very near future. All right, coming in at number nine, we have something that everyone needs to survive, especially on Mars, food. As you can probably guess, there isn't much food just lying around on the floor on Mars, so the first humans living there will eventually have to make their own. The problem is, the surface of Mars is almost as inhospitable to plants as it is to humans. The dusty Martian soil contains none of the nutrients found in Earth's soil that plants need. Nitrogen, a key part of photosynthesis isn't held in the Martian soil either. Right now, scientists are experimenting with breeding the toughest plants we possibly can and building special eco-domes for them on Mars to solve this food problem. It's one that needs to be addressed because there's no way we can pack everyone's lunch with the astronauts for the next 50 years. Not gonna happen. We need like a massive lunchbox. Now, another problem that both plants and humans will have in common on Mars is gravity. And at number eight, Mars is a less dense planet than Earth, and so it has less mass than Earth. This means that the gravity on Mars is only about 38% as strong as it is here on Earth. You would actually only weigh 38% of what you do right now if you stood on some scales on Mars. Now, although this might seem like the ideal weight loss plan for some people, it does present a problem. The human body has been evolving for millions of years on Earth with Earth's gravity. Everything about us suits this level of gravity right now. Astronauts who go into orbit around Earth for just a few months experience muscle and bone density loss, and the first people living on Mars will live there for years and years and years with much less gravity. Their bodies might need to be retrained for the new gravity and loss of muscle mass if they want to function normally. Moving on to number seven, we're talking location, location, location. It's no use having all of the things we need to survive on Mars unless we pick a good spot to live on Mars that won't result in all of us freezing or boiling to death in a matter of days. That wouldn't be too good. Now, some people think that Mars is just one big red dust ball and everything is the same across its surface. But the truth is Mars has varied seasons and climates just like Earth. Because of Mars' elliptical orbit, the southern hemisphere of the planet has far hotter summers and far colder winters than the northern hemisphere. In an interview on this very subject, Ashwin Basavadar, a scientist for NASA's Mars Science Laboratory, said that you probably want a permanent base somewhere in the low northern latitudes. And if NASA thinks that's a good idea, Idea, then it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm gonna go with NASA. Next up, we've got something that you don't really think about until you really, really need it. And number six is medicine. Now, if us humans get sick on Mars, we won't be able to just pop to the Martian doctor for a few pills and be on our merry way. With the nearest help on Earth being a five month journey away, humans will need to either come prepared to fight potential diseases and viruses or develop drugs and medicines on Mars themselves. The World Health Organization lists over 380 drugs as being essential medicines for humans to help fight off any potential illnesses. Now that list would need to be narrowed down to save on the transport costs of getting them to Mars, but also most of these drugs have not actually been tested in space. The few that have been tested appear to work very differently in different gravity than they do here on Earth. So if we want to figure out the most effective medicine to take with us to Mars, we've got a lot of pill popping left to do. All right, moving on now. Let's talk about something that might not seem
seem essential when I first mention it, but you'll soon realize that it might just be as important as anything else on this list. At number five, we've got entertainment. Now hear me out. Now for those of you who have seen movies such as The Martian or Moon, you can see that living out in space could be a bit of a lonely business. Sure, you'll have your other crewmates with you, but if you were to live on Mars, you would still have the same needs and desires as humans on Earth, and one of the most fundamental things humans need is intellectual stimulation, possibly in the form of entertainment. This wouldn't just be some luxury either. We aren't robots. Humans' mental well-being and productivity depends on having access to art and music and film and any type of entertainment you can really think of. It helps keep the brain healthy. Instead of carrying all your box sets or downloading years of films onto your laptop, your most likely form of entertainment will probably be beamed to you straight from Earth via satellite transmission. Kind of like a planetary Netflix, I guess. Okay, moving on now. For many people, living on Mars can't happen unless there is already a habitable environment there to begin with. And if humans can't go there first to do this, at number four, we could always get robots to prepare it all for us. NASA is actually aiming to put humans on Mars by 2030, but 10 years before that, they want to send something else to pave the way. In 2020, they want to send an unmanned module with a Mars rover to help prepare for the human mission. When the astronauts then arrive 10 years later, they would find a fully equipped underground base already constructed for them by a team of robots. That's like so futuristic. Now building it underground would help protect the astronauts from radiation in the first stages of the mission. NASA's plan of sending robots to do all this dirty work so we don't have to might just be the key to staying on Mars and not just landing there. Alright, at number three now, we have to decide who will be in charge once we get there. All space missions to date have followed the same protocol that's been used in exploration missions for hundreds of years. There is always some sort of hierarchy with a commander of sorts at the top. Having this person there works well for a traveling crew because it means one person can make quick executive decisions for the good of the group. But this might not work so well for a permanent colony on Mars. If there's one thing that history has taught us, it's that letting one person have all the power without question might not be the best idea. Power can and will corrupt people. Think about it, if humans still can't get along down here on Earth, then we need to make sure there is some system in place to ensure that everyone works together on Mars. Maybe some sort of democracy where the colonists vote on a leader, maybe a government that decides everything for them, would the humans on Mars then become independent from Earth? Now these are all things we need to decide if we want to live on Mars for more than just a few years without just tearing ourselves apart. Classic humans. Next up now, we've got something that no human can go more than three days without. Absolute fact. I know what some of you guys are thinking, but no, it's not the internet, it's not Wi-Fi. And number two is water. Now over the past few decades, science Scientists have become increasingly certain that not only is there water in Mars's frozen ice caps or buried beneath its surface, there even seems to be some water flowing on its surface. Companies like Mars One, who are planning a mission to Mars, plan to heat up the Martian soil until the water there evaporates. It will then be stored, rationed, and recycled by the astronauts there. But it seems like the real problem won't be finding water on Mars, it will be the water itself. Scientists estimate that Martian water actually contains perchlorate a chemical that is toxic to humans. We will need to use a lot of energy purifying that water, or there's always option B. Drink our own pee after it's been purified. Yeah, welcome to the future of the human race. Okay, we've reached the end now, and you guys might be thinking, what could possibly be more important than water for humans to live on Mars? Well, everything we've talked about so far is essential for the short term, but if we really want to live on Mars and not just visit it, at number one, we need to terraform it. Hundreds of millions of years ago, Mars used to be very like Earth, with a thick atmosphere and large oceans. Then, over time, its atmosphere was stripped away by solar winds, and its oceans evaporated into space, leaving the inhospitable rock that we see today. But many scientists feel this can be reversed. The key would be to build Mars a new atmosphere, keep the planet warm, and stop the atmosphere from being lost to space like it was before. Now there will be many challenges to overcome though. For every article I could find that described how Mars could be turned into a second Earth, there was another article saying there is no known way to build Mars a permanent atmosphere right now. And until we figure that out, we may 
may just be doomed to live on Mars in our tiny eco pod things. It could be hundreds and hundreds of years before humans can walk and breathe on Mars without a spacesuit. What do you guys think though? Has this inspired you to go to Mars? Are you excited to see it be done in the next few decades or do you think the problems we've talked about here have made it seem more like science fiction than science fact? Whatever your thoughts are, let me hear them down below in the comments section. You'll find me there too on my you know, YouTube account discussing all of this with you guys because honestly, if I'm honest with you, I could talk about space all day, especially Mars. Fascinating stuff. Thanks for watching Most Amazing Top 10 guys. I hope the rest of your day is fantastic. My name is Danny Burr. You can find me on Instagram somewhere down there and I'll see you guys in a bit.